Hello and welcome to In the Course of the Wendon King. This week we are doing our final Yes album. Our final Yes album. Yeah, it's not the, the final Yes album, but it's the, it's the last one we're going to do. End of the main sequence. Um, yeah, so we're doing Going for the One. This is Going for the One. Waitman is back. Um, which is alright, I suppose. Um, I like Brack so, you know. The sun, you know, the... the the winter has ended. The sun is out. Blue skies. Naked man as well, but ignore the naked man. That's not there. Blue skies. See, happiness, sunshine, and happiness. And um, normal songs and normalness. Um, it still counts as the main sequence. Right? Because it's they're, they're, they've still got their muse. Yeah, but it isn't. there's nothing inventive on here. There's nothing new on here. It, but it, in a way, it's kind of generic, yes. The production is kind of Sony 4K, 4,000 track. Um, but there are a million tracks of different sounds on this album, which is not the kind of production I would normally go for, to be honest. It suits some of the songs. Yeah, so Rick Whiteman's back, yeah. Yeah. There is lots of keyboards. There is lots of keyboards, but it sounds good. It does sound good. It's good. It's good keyboards. It's not sort of piercing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna burst your ear drum keyboards. It does seem he's realised that the piano sounds good. Yeah, and it sounds better than. Rick Whiteman is an excellent piano, and he can write some really nice piano pieces, mm -hmm. like the stuff he did for Black Sabbath. Yeah, that was a really. That was a supervisor. It was nice. Yeah. You right, Pat? Hello. Yeah, I'm recording the, the video with Kev. Lots of keyboards. Yeah, the stuff he did for Black Sabbath yeah. was quite good. And it wasn't at all like Yes. Mm. So, you know, he could do that. Yeah. And and he chose not to before. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's bizarre that they got rid of Patrick. I think they... <laughs> did they get rid of Patrick Morant? Yeah, they kicked him out. Yeah. They just left him. And in, I think, the, in the cold in Switzerland. I think what it was, was maybe Rick Whiteman was a big draw for them. And financially and ticket sales sort of yeah, made you, sense. you would think yeah but I mean they were huge with Patrick Morris so did, I mean I'm not completely co convinced why but maybe maybe they saw the writing on the wall they, they saw that they, they you know they, they picked yeah. um, but maybe there was an element of realizing their muse was coming to an end as well yeah. I've got a slightly different take on that you, you're probably right the muse is still here just about, but I think the so maybe the solo work had something to do with it. If because of all that in in between the um, relayer and this, yeah, they each did a, a solo album, yeah. yeah, which obviously they kind of expressed what they had to express there. Yeah. So when that when they come when they come back to this album, there's sort of there's not they that do, sort yes. of battle, battle going on. So it's sort of yeah. it's more about the songs producing an album and the songs. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think mate, that that's what it sounds like is happening, mm, and maybe that's why it's more generic. Yes, sounding. Yeah, it does sound quite generic. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, yeah. but I mean, you know, a lot on on sort of a lot of the previous album, you got weird things like um, your alternative titles for the different tracks. And if mm. if I was to give this an alternative title, it would be no effort required <laughs> because it is a, it is a lot easier to listen to yeah. than the previous stuff. It really is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Suddenly it's it's, it's uh, yeah. accessible. And but it wasn't easy to make, interestingly, although I think they had a lot of fun making it, apparently it was it was hard work making it. It it wasn't something that came naturally, you know, yeah. interestingly. So, should we do the first song? Yeah. The first song is Going for the One. Going for the One. Um, right from the start you hear a change. This is not this is like almost a different band from Relay. You've got slidey guitar, American sounding guitar, bow, you know, um, and it's got um, poppy melody, and it's a rock song. Um, there's a hell of a lot going on in there with the keyboards and too many layers of stuff, but it is just a song. Yeah, I mean, it's incredibly short for a yes song, isn't it? Yeah. It starts straight away, five minutes to five and a half minutes sort of thing. And the beginning sounds a lot like Celebration Day. Yeah. Almost, yeah. almost hang on, are they ripping Led Zeppelin off here? Yeah. But, um, I mean, that doesn't last too long. 
this is, I mean, it does tell you straight away that this it's still got proggy elements in there. Yeah. But it's prog light. It's not. Yeah. It's not full on. It, yeah, only only in the context of the other albums. Yeah. If you hadn't heard the other albums, you'd think, well, this is prog, isn't yeah. it? This is song two, not song two. <laughs> Turn of the century. Turn of the century. This is one of my favourite Yes songs, um, and it's it's unique, I think, in that it's it's keyboard and guitar are the dominating sounds working together, and, and it, that doesn't often happen in Yes, actually. Not really like that. Well, they're, they're, they're both very dominating, but they're, they're in unison, they're working together. That's yeah, because, I mean, the guitar's very plinky yeah. in this, and the sort of piano, it's sort of very guitar similar, sort of, very, very sort of similar sort of sound, isn't it? So yeah. they can complement each other. And John Anderson, his vocals seem to fit this song perfectly. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's uh, the whole thing is, is something that naturally fits with yes, the yes sound, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Which I think they were they've been fighting against in the previous album. It seemed to me they were sort of fighting their natural, yeah, where you would expect them naturally, naturally to go. Yeah. Um, but I think that was because they wanted to be interesting. Yeah, and do different yeah. things and experiment. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this sounds they're more interested in being entertaining. They're writing a song. Yeah. Yeah. A song. There's no musical similarity, but to me it sits in a similar place to the Rain song, and it's that that acoustic. Vibe and it's it's an epic acoustic epic. It is yeah. seven and a half minutes, so it's yeah. almost an epic. I actually think it, it is a little bit long, and it starts to sound a bit Christmassy in places. <laughs> Only briefly, like that's got to be Waitman's fault. Yeah, that's the way. Yeah, um, but there's some yeah cool weird woo woo sounds in there as well, which I really like. It. It's um, well, it's a straightforward, actually a straightforward story, sort of. The the the, the lyrics about uh, I think a painter. I think it's a painter, not a sculptor. I'm not sure. And his wife's died, but then he paints her, and he, she comes to life. And I think it's based on something in Greek mythology, but which I don't know anything about, so I'm not going to attempt to talk about it. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. Because on this album, there may be stories behind each one, but it's irrelevant. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is onto Parallels. Parallels. I think this is the weakest song on the album. This, this signals the way where they were going to go. This sounds like it's on the next album. And... There's, it's it's typical in that sense in that the, it's funny this is what you've said about most of yes in that there's some good bits but overall as a song it's it's extremely banal um, the good bit I originally before I'd heard this album I saw a video a documentary and that they had them recording the, the the little middle eight which is kind of it's kind of abbery, um but with key changes and I really like that but the rest of the song is, is um, I think the organ riff is kind of rubbish. Yeah, it sort of in places it plods. In other times, it's, now this is a this was originally going to be on Chris Squire's solo album. Yeah, and it's a Chris Squire song. Okay, you know I would have high expectations of that. I quite like yeah. Chris Squire. Uh, and and you're right, it doesn't quite deliver. The organ, the church organ that they've got on there, it sort of it works in places, but they they use it in a sort of it sort of bridges um, the harmony and the rhythm, mm. and it's too strong for that. It kind of lurches. It, it cuts, yeah. cuts across the cuts across the music and, and starts to dominate again. And you sort yeah. of you start to think, oh, this is this is a bit too much. Yeah. But there are some uh, little little solo bits on there, which, which is quite good. Yeah. If if they tone that down a bit, it'd, it'd probably be a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I think the strange the verse is strangely a melodic, which is very odd. It's just you know, it's it's like just words being sung. Yeah. With that tune, but it's not harrowing. <laughs> Whereas previously, yeah, just, when things weren't working, it, it, it was horrible. It, yeah. yeah, it's quite quite great. In, it's just meh, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, they open the show with it though. So, what do I know? What do we know? Yeah. That's parallels. Yeah, wondrous stories. Um, yes, this album, 1977, punk. Was it was was it was the summer of punk and and all these bands had been swept away. That's why this was number one, and they had a number seven single. Mm -hmm. You knew I was going to say that, didn't you? Uh, yeah, this is a hit. This is a, a single. It is a, a song, a folk song. It is kind of twee. It's very. It's a John Anderson song. One of the things that brought Rick Wakeman back because of the melody. It does. It does feel a little bit like mm. one of the not so good. Simon and Garfunkel songs. Yeah. 
with yeah. keyboard on it. Yeah. Uh, and then in places it gets it gets quite good actually. But yeah, it's quite. It's definitely a single. Yeah, single. single. Oh, yeah. It's three minutes long, isn't it? Yeah. Which leaves the epic awaken. Now I think really significantly, you know, there was space on this size of the record for wondrous stories. It's only 15 minutes, and that does seem like that's just how long the piece of music was. Whereas in the past, I think in most of their long songs, it was padded to fit on the yeah. side of the record. I think Gates of Delirium was probably the only exception, I think, which was longer than, than the side of the record. Um, but Awaken, th this is so important. It's John Anderson's favourite yes song. It's so, it's, it's, it's so straightforward compared to what they've done before. It's so straightforward. And yet it's got all the emotion in there that, that you know, that, that they needed. And, you know, it's like they've, they've found, they don't need all that, all that musical sophistication and faux lyrical sophistication. They don't need any of that. They can do it, but with just you know, a riff and some chord changes and some bing, 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 harp. And it's soaring, profound stuff. It's wonderful. It's great. Yeah. I mean, I turned it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's sort of how good it was. And it rocks. And yeah, and when I finished, it kind of I felt like I wanted to go back to the beginning of the album and play it again. That's great. So it did yeah. you know, do a good job. Yeah, it's um, it's gone back to the uh, mind and heart duality thing. Um, you've got one section which is the single called the riff with with melodic stuff on top of it. And then you've got the bit where there's loads of chord changes, epic chord changes, and uh, but the the melody isn't changing. And that, that, that I think that that's that's the duality thing again. Okay, which which is which? Because I quite like well the riff at the start. You know that that's that's the probably the mind I think. Yeah. And it's 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 heavy and it's it's, it's rocking and you know, and then you've got the the epicness the ah of the bit after the quiet bit. Where it all comes back in and, and do, 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 do. Um, and it shows off John Anderson's voice again. It's great, and you've got the the little um, the vocal bit at the start, a cappella vocal bit at the start, and and it isn't the melody isn't resolved until he reprises it right at the very end. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Excellent. And what you know what what do Yes play at the end of their concerts if they're playing loads of epics? Oh, I can. My favourite epic. There you go. Yeah. From Yes. From Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Get that in. Um, and that's, uh, you know. That's that album. That's going for the one. We like going for the one. It's good. We have The journey has come to an end. The next album was a pile of crap, so we're not going to review that. Goodbye, Yes. End of Yes. So what's 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 our top ten Yes songs? Um, I choose Gates of Delirium. I choose Going for the One. Close to the Edge. Turn of the Century. Um, I choose. There's not this one, but I can't think of it. Awaken. We'll go with Parallels. Oh, really? And, um, and You and I. Wondrous Stories. Part of the Sunrise. Yeah, let's go with the Fish. So, that's it. Thank you very much. See you next time. We'll be back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll be back with Off the Wall by Michael Jackson. Hello, hi, welcome to Top of the Pop. The Wenton Project.